Hey guys, this is Giridhar here for Gadget Detail. Vivo mobiles have been around for over two years. Uh, two years was enough for Vivo to build a strong base in India. Today, Vivo has become a household name. While we were raving about the Samsung, HTC and OnePlus, uh, Vivo quietly crept up from behind and took a strong hold of the Indian market. I have the newly launched Vivo V5 with me and in this video, let's go ahead and review it. Every Vivo mobile has a different design. Vivo is known for the solid construction and V5 is no exception. The design looks a lot like iPhone, Asus Zenfone or even the Oppo mobile. Though each Vivo phone is different from each other, this mobile looks a lot like the other mobiles in the market. It has a metal body with 2.5D curved glass on the front. The power and the volume buttons are on the right. The hybrid dual SIM tray is on the left. The bottom has the USB port, 3.5mm audio jack, speaker grills and a mic. The display is 5.5 inch and the bezels are thin. Above the display is the 20 megapixel front facing camera with a flash, which is the highlight of this device. The proximity and ambient light sensors are also on the top while the bottom has the backlit navigation keys. The fingerprint sensor is on the front. The back has the 13 megapixel camera with a single LED flash. The mobile is quite handy to hold and operate. The design is ergonomic and it feels quite comfortable in the hand. It does not have an unique design identity, but I don't see a problem with that. The Vivo V5 has a 720p display on a 5.5 inch screen. The display has high white levels. The contrast levels are not right and everything appears to be overly bright. The text is crisp, the colors are vivid, but the white balance is a bit cold. Eye protection mode makes the display yellowish and it is good for reading but not for media consumption. Display is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass and also has a layer of tempered glass applied on it already out of the box. Full HD display and a better brightness and contrast calibration would have made this display a good one. With what we have at hand, the display does not impress me. Vivo V5 does not have an impressive hardware specification under the hood. But my policy is not to rate the device based on what's on the paper but to rate it based on what it can do. The MediaTek MT6750 processor with 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage gives you a pleasing performance. The mobile can push you through your daily task. I have loaded over 45 apps on this mobile and it shows no signs of lag. The UI is fast and smooth and responsive. The hardware does not score high on benchmark tests but the UI is lightweight interface. It demands less resource and it keeps the resource free for your apps and games. With respect to gameplay, the heavy games when pushed to max limit started dropping frame rates drastically. Keeping the graphics at medium or low level ensures a fairly smoother gameplay. It does not heat up easily but after 30 minutes of continuous gameplay, it starts showing signs of heating. Considering that this is a mid-range mobile, the performance is satisfying. This fingerprint scanner on the front resembles the Samsung Home key. But it is not a mechanical key, it is just a capacitive button. It is fast and accurate and can detect from all angles even if the finger is wet or oily. It can be used to apply a security layer over apps. The fingerprint scanner on V5 is very impressive. It is the age of selfies and Vivo V5 is the right mobile for this age. It has a powerful 20 megapixel front facing camera with a single LED flash. Vivo calls it a moonlight flash but it is just a marketing name for it. It has nothing to do with moon or light. If a camera has a flash, the flash must help the camera in getting a faster shutter speed. But in Vivo V5, the camera and the flash are not talking to each other. There is no adjustment because of the flash being fired. Also, the flash is pretty weak and useless. Under daylight, it does not give a good fill light. In dim light, it does not give the sensor a fast shutter speed. Show the images still shake. Talking about the images from the front camera, it is good. There is no doubt about it. I turned off the flash and clicked quite a bit of selfies. I found that the camera has capable hardware. The software is the problem here. The exposure locking is not trustworthy and it has a mind of its own. The background is overexposed, killing the purpose of selfies most of the time. The image quality is unpredictable and highly inconsistent. I tried clicking with third-party camera apps and found that the image is much much better in them. The skin tone, details, sharpening and exposure are all on mark. So it is the Vivo software that needs tweaking. 13 megapixel primary camera is an awesome shooter as well. The images shot from it have the right amount of exposure, contrast and saturation. The mobile can shoot videos at 1080p 30 frames per second. 
The camera UI is very basic. The labels on the action item are funny and it appears to be a literal translation from Chinese. But as I said, the entire software needs an update. Hope the update fixes the labels and other user experience issues found in the camera. Vivo has high quality audio system with DAC AK4376. The phone's mono speaker has an average quality output, but when connected with a headphone, the sound delivered is very rich. There is not enough bass to give you that thump, but the voice clarity and treble is distinct and rich. V5 runs on Android 6.0 with a proprietary shell FunTouch OS 2.6 on top of it. I am not impressed about the visual design and text alignment on the FunTouch OS, but the user experience and the feature bouquet has improved a lot. It has a host of gesture control features. It supports one hand mode, a dual screen, scrolling screenshot, screen recording and much more special features that adds the user experience. The UI is also lightweight. It is fast and responsive. Vivo V5 is powered by a 3000 mAh battery and it does not support fast charging. It charges from 0 to 100 in about 2 hours. The UI does not have an option to check battery usage. I ran the PC Mark battery test and the device lasted for 5 and a half hours from 95% to 20%. That is really impressive. On my regular usage, it lasts for more than a day and it has about 30 to 35% left when I hit the bed. The mobile is priced at rupees 17,980 rupees. When you pay rupees 17,980 for the Vivo V5, you get a mobile which does not have an unique design, has a decent performance and a good battery life. It can take interesting selfies and the UI is fast. It does not heat up unnecessarily and the Vivo V5 has a good after-sales reputation. So you can definitely buy this mobile if you are not comfortable with buying a mobile online. Alternatively, you can consider Asus Zenfone 3, Lenovo Z2, Lemax 2, G4 Plus or even the older OnePlus 2 if you have access to online stores. Overall, Vivo V5 is a good mobile which scores decently across all segments. You would not regret buying it. If you have any other queries about this mobile, do let me know and don't forget to share and like this video and do subscribe to this channel. I will see you in the next video. This is Girudev signing off.